So the Lineage OS 21 official build is available for Poco M2 Pro, Redmi Note 9 Pro, Pro Max, Redmi Note 9S and Redmi Note 10 Lite. So I have installed this ROM on my Redmi Note 9 Pro as you can see and today I am going to review this ROM and I will talk about the battery performance, the stability and I will also do a gaming test. So let's get started. So this is the post you can see here. This is 27th May build of Lineage OS 21 and this is official build for our devices and I think it's the very first time we can see an official build for our devices and you can directly download this build from here. I will leave a link of this post in the video description. So let's start from the settings. So in the about phone if I go to the android version you can see this is lineage os 21 and we get this doodle and the kernel that is used in this rom is lineage kernel I guess because there is no name mentioned and the version is 336 not upstreamed and the security update is of 5 may 2021 now in the system we have buttons and in buttons we have long press for torch automatically turn off torch then keyboard cursor control etc and we have click to partial screenshot which is working fine you can see then we have the keyboard then the system profiles so you can customize the sound options of your device then we have the status bar and in status bar we get the network traffic monitor and the network traffic monitor is working fine as you can see here then we have the clock position battery textile auto brightness button then we have the gestures and in gestures we get the leap to check phone so when the phone is on idle and we lift the phone the screen wakes up then we have the press and hold power button and we have the navigation mode and if i go to settings we have this option which is hide navigation hint so by default we get the ime button space under the keyboard but if i turn it off then the ime button space is still there so it does not hide now if i go to wallpaper and styles you can see we get this typical ui and we have these options we have more lock screen options and in more lock screen option we again get the lip to check phone which is the ambient mode then we have the dynamic clock and you can add text to your lock screen like if i add something here it will be displayed in the lock screen as you can see so you can add your name right here then if i go to the change wallpaper option we only get the on device wallpapers and my photos and if i go to on device wallpapers we get these options so i don't know why the google wallpapers isn't working maybe because i flashed the nick g apps core so if you want the google wallpapers then you have to flash nick g apps basic or omni i guess and we get the color schemes right here and if i go to other colors you can customize the accent color manually then if i go to home screen you can see we get these options we get font shape and icon style so in fonts we get only four options and in icon we get these options and in the shape we get these options now moving to the display we get the night light then the colors and we don't get the dedicated color correction modes we have natural boosted and adaptive then we have the screen saver tap to wake wake on plug etc now in sound and vibration we get these options we don't get the increasing ring volume because it's linear joys there is very less options for customizing but we get the charging sound right here and you can customize the sound now in battery we get the battery information but the battery information is broken and we get the device temperature right here which is working actually then we have the battery saver and in battery saver we get three modes and in schedule we can add any schedule so here says schedule which is based on percentage and it works like this and in battery usage we get the usage right here and in lineage wise 8 hours of skin on time is pretty normal you will probably get 8 to 9 hours of skin on time easily then we have the battery light and you can customize the intensity then we have the charging control and in charging control we get these three modes now in apps we get the default apps unused apps and app battery usage if i go to the launcher settings we have the app lock basically you can see we have hidden and protected apps so if i enter the fingerprint i can add any apps and then if i open the app it will require fingerprint and you can also use password so let me unlock it then in launcher settings we also get the lock layout add app, app icons to home screen etc 
Now in connected devices, we don't get anything extra. And in network and internet, we have the private DNS and we get the cloud player DNS right here. So this is it about the settings. Now talking about the performance, in this ROM, we don't get the thermal profiles. So the performance is default all the time. You cannot set any thermal profile for any apps. And in default performance, I tested the Antutu and the result was pretty good you can see it scored 3,82,511 which is a good score i guess because when i said thermal profiles it maximum gives 3,93,000 which is also a great score but even without thermal profiles you can see the score is not bad it's actually really good and i also tested the cpu thermal throttling and you can see the graph right here so at first the cpu clock fluctuates a little bit as you can see right here but then it stabilizes itself and the cpu throttled 85 percent of its maximum performance but if there is thermal profiles we could get more performance out of it but still the performance is not bad and talking about the google photos storage we don't get google photo storage because it's stock aosp it's lineage os so we don't get anything like that now talking about the drm info we get the l1 certification right here as you can see here then talking about the play store certification sadly the device is not certified as you can see right here and also if i show you the yasnak you can see the basic integrity is passed but the cts profile is mismatched so to fix this issue we can use modules like safety net fix and play certification fix and you can also watch this video from my channel to fix the safety net but for that you have to do root because without root we cannot flash any modules and one thing is very and one thing is very useful in this rom which is the ram management just check out the ram management you can see whatever app i opened is still there in the ram you can see literally all the apps that i opened are there in the ram so the ram management is pretty dope and if you say it's just the normal apps so it is normal but no if i open the bgmi let me open the bgmi real quick so you can see i opened the bgmi and now if i check the ram management of the other apps you can see the apps are still there like if i open telegram so the telegram <laughs> sadly reloaded however the other apps are still there in the RAM you can see and I have the 4GB RAM variant that's why the RAM management is little bit lower the telegram could not stay in the RAM but if you have 6GB RAM variant just think about the RAM management that you are going to get in this ROM so yes the RAM management is pretty dope in this ROM so if you want great battery life and great RAM management and also great stability then you can definitely go for this ROM the ROM is really good now talking about the stock camera of this ROM, we get the lineage camera, lineage aperture camera and you can see three sensors are working fine. We don't get access to the black and white sensor which is a depth sensor basically. We cannot take photos from it. But if I go to video mode, you can see we get these options. We get timer, grid settings and we get the frame rate which is a very useful option because in other ROMs where we get the lineage OS aperture camera we don't get the FPS option but we get that in this ROM so it is pretty useful option and you can see it's working fine and you can also change the resolution so the camera is definitely working fine and this ROM has the call recording option which works really fine you can see here and let's again test the RAM management you can see this time the telegram did not reload it and the Antutu also did not reload and also the wallpaper and style and the play store so yes the ram management is definitely good so yeah this is it for the overview now let's get to a quick gaming review so let's do a quick team death match in the bgmi and i cannot do a battle royale because my surrounding temperature is more than 40 degrees so the devices will get too hot so you can see the current fps right here and I have flashed the FPS module that's why I have extreme options you can see I have extreme plus options because I have the FPS unlocker module so you can see we are getting around 60 FPS from the beginning
so the frame rate just dropped to 53 but the overall gaming is smooth So the frame rate is dropping to 40 fps for few seconds but mostly the frame rate is around 55 so as there is no option for setting the thermal profiles we cannot set bgmi to gaming that's why there is some frame drops to 40 fps while i am doing the gaming test So yeah this is it you can see the frame rate is very stable it's hovering around 45 to 50 and in the beginning when the device was not that hit not that heated it was giving around 55 fps so that's good and if you use any module for gaming then the frame rate will be more stable but that will generate heat also and in 5 minutes of gaming let's see the temperature so if I go to battery information you can see the battery temperature is only 39 degree so the temperature control in this ROM is really good and also the RAM management you can see the BGMI stayed in the RAM now talking about the installation of this ROM, in whatever ROM you are, just make sure to flash the Orange Fox recovery which supports a B2 based encryption, then just reboot into recovery. So you can see I have the Orange Fox recovery installed and this is based on a B2 encryption. That's why it supports the decryption in the recovery. So for installing this ROM, just go to wipe and select the Dalvik cache data and you can also select the metadata and swipe to wipe now after that go to downloads and go to that directory where you have where you have kept the rom zip then click on the rom zip and swipe to flash the rom after that go to format data type yes and hit enter and i'm not doing this because this will wipe all my data now when the wipe is complete or the format data is complete just go to this section and reboot to system and the lineage os will boot normally and let's see the lineage os boot animation so guys this is it for this video if you found this video helpful make sure to subscribe to this channel Around 93% of my viewers are not subscribed to this channel so I request you please subscribe if you like my content. So I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.